So I'm sitting in the house, minding my own business, doing a little bit of work, and I get a phone call from another bail bondsman. And I was like, hey, what's up? He goes, hey, man, can you help me out? And I was like, I don't know. It depends. Can you pay me? He's like, yeah, I can pay you. I said, that's great. Then I can help you out. See how that works? The world is a beautiful, beautiful place. He says, listen, I'm having a little bit of a hard time finding one of the guys I got on bond. He's missed his court date. I got a warrant for his arrest. And I can't find him. Can you help me out? I said, sure. Tell me what you know. So he lets me know the guy's name and where he's supposed to be staying. And as soon as he says where he's supposed to be staying, <laughs> I know that I know two things that this bail bondsman does not know. Number one, that street, there are two of them. One is in Asheville. One is in Fairview. If you punch it into Google, Google's going to send you to the wrong one 100% of the time. The second thing is, is that I own property on the street. So I'm very familiar with the neighbors, the neighborhood. And what's going on there? So I'm like, yeah, you know, um, I can head over there, see if I can snatch him up. Shouldn't be too much of a problem. So I do. I go over there. And as I pull in, I look at the piece of property that I own, and it's still a piece of shit. So I park my car there. I say hi to the tenant. He says hi back. And I start walking down the road. And as I walk down the road, I see an ongoing domestic disturbance. It seems two neighbors are mad at each other, and they've brought this argument into the street. They live across the street from each other. So I do what I always do, which is, you know, just kind of interject myself into that particular disturbance because one of these houses, the one on the right, is where my guy's supposed to be staying at. So got to make contact somehow. So I walk up there and they're in the middle of an argument. They're pointing and yelling and screaming. And I just kind of bring my five foot eight, 135 pound ass right into the middle of it. I'm like, hi guys, what's going on? Now, the funny thing about an argument is these two guys, and both of them are bigger than me, they stop arguing immediately, and they look at me. Now, I'm in the wrong neighborhood, okay? I don't have the right paint job. I don't speak the language, yada, yada, yada. And, uh, but I have interrupted their argument. <sighs> now, I notice one of them is carrying a pistol, and his pistol is got it to where the pistol grip is pointed forward instead of back. Now, either A, he's an idiot and put the pistol on the wrong hip, or B, there's a specific reason that he cross draws. And I kind of take that into account and hold it in the back of my head because, well, now there's three of us and two of us have pistols. And uh, But they stop their argument. They look at me and they uh, want to know who I am and why I'm there. And I'm like, well, typically I'm the one that asks those questions. So, um... Why are you guys arguing? And I think they just kind of assumed I was a cop. I showed up in a big truck and I have a pistol and, you know, I look like this. And uh, one of them starts telling me how the other one has cut his water off. And the other one is like, I did not cut his water off and all this other bullshit. And I'm like, wow, you guys really suck at conflict resolution. And now they both get pissed at me because I've insulted them both. And I was like, you know what? I know one or two things about wells. Would you like me to take a look at it? Maybe I can figure out what's going on with your well. The guy's like, absolutely, because I didn't turn off his water, and you'll see that. I can prove it. I don't care. Let's go look at the well. So I go over there, and I look at the well. And uh, sure enough, it's got a bad pressure switch on it. And with a bad pressure switch, it's not going to kick on, and nobody's going to have any water. So I'm like, listen, I got this shit in my truck. I can fix this. We can be all good. It's not going to be a problem. And both of them went from hating me to all of a sudden they like me. So I go get my tools. I go over there and I'm working on the pressure switch. And, you know, in under 15 minutes, I've got the old pressure switch out, the new pressure switch in, and there's water and everybody's happy. And so they're like, wow, you know, cool. Thanks, man. And I'm like, no problem. Now, back to the reason that I'm here. Uh, this house right here, it's got little numbers on it. Uh, that's the house I'm looking for. And the guy goes, that's my house. Why are you here? And I'm like, ah, do you know so-and-so? And he goes, yeah, what's he done this time? I said, well, you know, I don't know. And honestly, I don't care, but he does have a warrant. And the guy goes, well, I don't want him living at my house anyway. He's just here because my daughter is asking him to be here because he doesn't have a place to go. I said, he does have a place to go. He absolutely does. The place is called jail. And he goes, man, that's freaking awesome. And I said, well, that's great. So he's here now. Can I, can I get him now? And he goes, no, he's not here now. I said, where is he? He says, uh, he's run up the street to get cigarettes. And I'm like, fucking great. Like I can set this shit up now, you know? 
So I wait for a little while and sure enough, here comes dipshit and he parks his car and gets out of his car. And as soon as he closes the car door, I start walking up to him from out of the dark and I practically scare the shit out of him. I'm like, hey, are you so-and-so? And he's like, who wants to know? And I'm like, I'm pretty sure you have a warrant. And at that point, he takes off running in the opposite direction of me, but he failed to look where he was running and he ran into the guy that let me know that he was there. Literally just bounced off the guy's stomach flat on the ground. So now he's on the ground, his head is at my feet and he's looking up at me and I was like, dude, you're a douchebag. Now you're completely covered in mud and you're going to jail and you're not getting in my truck because I'm not cleaning this mud out of my truck. So fuck you, I'm handcuffing you in the back of my pickup truck. You know, the little tie down ratchet straps, you can handcuff a set of handcuffs to that. So now you get to ride to the jail, wet, covered in mud, in the wind, and I don't give a fuck. So he's nine kinds of pissed, but hey, the guy helped me load him up into the truck, and I don't turn down free help. So there's a couple morals to this story. One, don't always assume that your neighbors are being pricks. Sometimes shit just breaks or misunderstandings happen. Number two, if you're dating a guy and your dad doesn't want him living in the house, he's probably not a good guy. You should probably, you know, date a guy that doesn't have warrants. Um, just a thought. And uh, other than that, that was my night. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you later.